saw myself dealing with it all on my own. I feel like the walls are closing in on me. I convince myself to do what I've always done, walk through the pain, deal with it silently. I start to tremble, my eyes starting all over the place. I begin to struggle to breathe. I'm doing all I can. Again, I was all alone. I had to push through and get to class. Can you tell me about how you felt when you were walking to school in the morning? Uh, there was dread, fear. I was really shaky. And I'd always get like, kind of like hyper aware of everything that was around me. So I'd be like, really distracted by everything I walked past and every little kind of movement. What led up to you feeling that sense of dread and fear as you approached school? Uh, maybe the fact that I was getting closer to it. I think it got worse. I think I was just kind of like, oh no. Like, everything just kind of crashed down and there was like this huge weight on you. There's always going to be something really busy going on. Whether people were in the classes already or not, there was always somebody else in the corridors and the corridors weren't exactly huge. I think I was kind of claustrophobic as well. The, the walls would always feel like they were kind of closing in. And I always felt like everyone around me would be staring at me. And I was kind of like hyper aware still and just me like aware of everything that was happening around me and that could get really overwhelming. It would definitely trigger my anxiety to like a whole other level and I would get very shaky and I would hold on to um, inhaler because often when I panicked it would trigger an asthma attack so inhaler was kind of important. So being trapped in a room was kind of like being trapped in like a cage with a whole lot of bunch of things that like really scare you, surrounding you. In busy corridors, I would try and make my way through the crowd and towards the wall um, and then I would just kind of back up against the wall until the crowd passed and try and keep to myself. <laughs> Withdrawing meant less attention and the least attention I got, the more I felt okay. I think they would just see me as calm and trying to do my work or focusing and not really see that I am struggling. So, so you can see them? Yeah, but they can't see me. But they can't see you? Yeah. And how did you describe that? One way mirror. So it feels like? A one way mirror. I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. It's kind of like being a ghost, I feel like. Like, I can see everything happening around me, but they really can't see me. And then, like, pushing into you and crowding around you and thinking, I'm just kind of there, but not there. So, yeah, ghost. <laughs> Lessons, things that overwhelmed me was um, an overload of information. Um, I would take in all the information from the whole thing and everything would jump out at me because I think everything was really important and I would never be able to just pick out certain facts. So I am taking in all the information from everything all the time. <laughs> there is no filter. Um, I used I used the distractions of fidgeting and doodling as a filter. I would focus on the distraction I got from pens 
Um, twisting pins through my fingers. I think the noise of the pen kind of rattling or hitting off the desk um, would be a good one for noise and focusing on the movement I need to make to keep the pen spinning. At the end of the day I'd be so exhausted and terrified that it would affect my sleep cycle. I'd fall asleep maybe um, out of exhaustion but then I'd wake up before I should actually be going to bed. So I would maybe fall asleep really really late and wake up early in the morning so I can get ready for school and be super tired which would make the feeling of like dread and fear more intense I guess because I've had that lack of sleep. The feeling of dread I would have that night would be because the next day I knew I would have to repeat the same day again without anything changing because other people or myself would have the lack of understanding or the lack of support um, that we all kind of needed as well as myself. The feeling of isolation at school was, well, crushing, I think, because I could be surrounded by people and still be entirely alone. I'm going to ask you a little bit about autism now. What does being autistic mean to you? To me, being autistic means that I think a little differently than everybody else and I may struggle with certain aspects. Like, I personally struggle with feelings. Um, but I have, like, certain strengths that may be another person's weakness and I can use that to help me and I kind of like my hyper awareness because let me overload me sometimes it's a security blanket because then I know what everything's happening and I like to know things I like to have an understanding of things if you could teach one thing about you and autism what would it be if I could teach someone one thing about autism as a whole it would be that Nobody is exactly the same. There's no stereotypes. There's no specific things. It's like there's there's common things and there's things that can be completely unique to a person. And to bunch all of us together in one box just doesn't make sense. And so it's a way to get, I think everybody kind of to understand someone, you need to you need to know them first. To help them with strategies, you need to know them first. You need to know what gives them anxiety, what they like, what they don't like, what what textures they like, <laughs> what textures they don't like, <laughs> and just like the subtle things that nobody else would notice to just help bring out and to be aware of so that you know when maybe they're struggling or maybe when they're about to break. 